Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today Camtasia 2022 was just released. Now if you're not aware of this, Camtasia is what I use to do all of the videos on this channel, and I will continue to use it into the future, I imagine. I am very much a fan of this program. So when TechSmith reached out to me about sponsoring a video covering the new features of Camtasia 2022, I jumped in because again, this is one of those programs I wholeheartedly recommend. So we're going to do a bit of a combination. We're going to show you how I produce videos, and we're also going to show you what is new in Camtasia 2022. And what you see in front of you, this is new. This is the new home launch panel. Uh, and more or less, it's sort of a place where you come in, you can create from initial templates. There are a number of new templates you can go from. You can create new projects. You can loan existing projects. Uh, you have some learning portals here and access to online help, etc. But what you're probably going to do is start by recording your screen. Screen. So this is what I do for any kind of tutorial. And if you're doing tutorials or the kind of stuff I do on this channel, Camtasia is a great choice. Now what you see in front of you, this is the recorder. Now I don't generally do video. I hate video. Hi guys. Uh, but I will showcase it in this example. So you got the ability to turn these things on and off. Uh, you can set the frame rate to capture it. So I'm going to capture it 30 frames per second. I'm going to get my whole screen in this case. Um, we do have the video being recorded at 1080p. Uh, my microphone is selected. Now, interestingly enough, I do have a pair of recordings going. So this is going to make some uh, interesting results. You can also record system audio if you want or not. And then when you're ready to go, just hit record. So once we got our project starting to record, by the way, you can also acquire video from any other source or you can use an open source thing like OBS or Shadowplay, especially important if you need to do like a uh, high frame rate, real time games. That's one of those areas where Camtasia is not perfect, uh, but generally it is good enough. By the way, this is the Lyra Unreal Engine example. I'm just gonna use it as an example of something I might have recorded uh, in a uh, gameplay tutorial uh, or game development tutorial. And actually this is one of those things I mean to talk about at some point in the future because uh, this was a really cool example they released um, for creating uh, shooters using Unreal Engine 5. But that's not really the reason why we're here. We were just here to capture a little bit of footage, and now we have some footage captured. Now, you'll notice my uh, screen capture is not on screen. It's up here in the tray. I also have two of these things going, so I'm going to make sure it's the shorter one. All right, so this one, we are now done our recording. So we're going to stop our recording, and what this will do is fire up Camtasia itself. Now, Camtasia is... Uh, a full-blown video editing suite. So this project is a 4K project. You do have control over uh, how you want to set your project up, the frame rate you wish to work with, and so on. Down here, you can see uh, the audio that we recorded and also the uh, camera. So the camera settings, we can actually uh, make that as big or small as you wish. We could also get rid of it completely. Uh, we can change, change the opacity of it as well. So if you want to have an on-screen capture of yourself, uh, that is an option. Again, it's not one that I particularly use because I don't particularly like being on camera. Uh, on top of that, you've got your straightforward video going on here. Now, one of those things I almost always do, well, first off, I separate my audio from my video. It's just a habit I've got. You're working with the timeline down here. It is very simple and straightforward to work with. So we've got uh, the video recorded itself. It scrubs over time right here. And I could do something simple, like I could bring in an asset. I'll bring in the title screen for this particular video I've already designed. So a 4K image, like so. And what you often want to do is come down here, cut at a certain point in time, like so, and then we, we can uh, delete it. Or what I can do is I can grab all of these things. So if you've worked with a timeline, any kind of nonlinear video editor, you know what we are dealing with here. So we're going to drop that into the scene. Uh, I want to actually ripple replace, so no, straightforward replace right there. All right, so there we go. So now we have the uh, image in, so the title image, and then we transition over to the video that we were working with earlier on. Now, one of the things that has uh, been added in this particular release is there are transitions. Now, there have been a ton of transitions all along, but they have added 30 more of them in here. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you definitely know these things. Um, I often use a blur zoom to do a transition between. To do a transition, literally just drag and drop it in. That did it at the beginning as well. Uh, by the way, you could do a full undo there. So I just want to put it on that end. All right, so we'll do it at the end as well. By the way, if you want to get rid of it from somewhere, just basically, again, highlight it and delete it. Now, this is available, by the way, for Windows and Mac. Uh, they're very similar, but they actually perform slightly different. They have their own native interface. So here you can see we switch. We got the blur zoom in between the two videos. So you can do these cuts whenever you want. So anyways, I could come back into the middle of this video and do a cut there, and then we could do a fade through black. Uh, for example, if we just did a quick video edit so we could have it boom, 
So there to there. That's the standard straightforward stuff I do when making these videos. Now, where this thing really shines, though, is if you are doing tutorials. So let's zoom these down so we got a little bit more room. So let's say I need to do some narration of things. Well, I can do that using things like annotations. So I could drop them into the world like that. Uh, we resize them visually. And then you just put your text, your text here. Uh, you have full control over the text of everything here. By the way, any of this stuff can be fully animated. So I come down here. I can pick the, uh, oops, I need to actually select my text. So control A and let's change our text there. We change the size there like so. All of this stuff, by the way, also can be animated. We can also just simply apply um, behaviors to it. So here, for example, we've added a behavior to that particular narration and it will pop in. So that's actually kind of a boom. All right, there you see. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that you can do using Camtasia. Straightforward, how I video edit. It's very quite simple. Then when I'm done, I go ahead, I export it out. I pick the option. So I want to do this as 4K. Uh, the various different settings you want to do. Again, the frame rates you wish to export it out, the various quality levels you'd like. Uh, you've also got the ability to export directly to various different services. So I can have it upload straight up to YouTube, for example, publish out to Google Drive, and so on. So now let's get into some of the other cool stuff that was just added. So again, uh, in terms of transitions, we now have 30 new transitions for me to play with. You're definitely going to notice those in upcoming videos for me. Uh, there is the new Home Hub I mentioned earlier on, sort of a nice way to organize things. Uh, but one of the coolest new things is the library. If you come into the new Camtasia 2022 section, you're going to find there are a thousand plus items in here for you to use. And some of these are incredibly useful, especially if you are like me and doing tutorials. So we got some stuff here like straightforward audio, um, things like claps, guitar, strings, sounds, uh, and so on and so forth. So you got just some stock audio in here that you can work with. Um, you've got a number of different callouts for doing things like uh, counters. If you want to have a counter in your scene, literally just drag and drop it out. Um, and boom, you now have a counter, which by the way, you could just edit the values right there. You'll see it's got, um, yeah, let me zoom that in so you can see a standard time code in there. So you can set out the uh, timeline or the time limit for that counter to work with. Uh, but I'm going to get rid of the counter. And what we're going to instead show you is one of the things I think is the coolest. We've got a number of things here for like cursors and so on and UI. So you got titles and fills and overlays and, and other things like that. But what I love is these. So first off, we've got a number of different devices. So if, for example, you want to have the frame of an iPhone, you could drop that into the scene and work with it there. But where I find kind of useful is stuff like, let's say we want to do a search. So I could drop a search field in. I literally just drop it into the world like that. And then come up here and I can edit. So I can put the text right here. So I say game from scratch. And you're going to see over time as that goes on, see it fills in accordingly up here. Which, By the way, all of these things are. So this is actually a combination of items. If I double click it. We'll go into the edit mode. So we're here in another tab. So you can organize, you can create these, you know, sub clips of things. And you see how this all works together to create that search icon. So you can uh, create like sub clips within your scenes. Nice way of organizing things together, especially if you start doing some really complicated annotations or animations and such. You want to keep it all organized. Uh, you could do these into these, these groups that you can then drill down into as you saw right there. So you can put this search in like so. And let's say I wanted to have a button with an outline. So I'll do here. And you'll notice we've got uh, advanced snapping tools as well. So as I'm sizing it, it's going to snap to the dimensions of the other items. So I come over here, uh, we can do a fill of the button. Or is that fill of the text? I'm not 100% certain. So there, and we're going to change that to search. And let's say we wanted to show someone how that search would work. So we're going to make this the same timeline as our search field there. So this like so, you see it playing in the background. And now what I can do is part way in, and I'll just expand this up a little bit and I'll shrink these down a little bit. We could go ahead and add in another setting from here. So we got a whole bunch of new uh, cursor uh, animations in here as well. Very useful uh, stuff here as well. So here, for example, arrow double click. I guess I'm on a Mac, I'll do it Mac style. Drop it in here. I'll keep it at 30 frames per second, and we will point it to there. We will size it down a little bit. Come on, you. Let's size you down. 
and we will click over there. So you can see how it is easy it is to make these kind of animations and so on. By the way, uh, if we wish, so that might be a little bit hard to see at this point in time, uh, what I could do is I could also take these two items, drag them up, and then straightforward annotations. This is existing stuff. This is things I use all the time. Uh, I could drop in here just like a, a black or a, a background square. Like so, so you can see there is our square. And I could drop it in behind like so. It makes it a little bit easier to see. So you can do these really complex groups, by the way. Again, I could take them all together and we could group them into a single thing. And again, you can drill down into that group and treat it as a single entity. And again, it has a timeline working for it. So this new library, this massive library of new stuff, Camtasia 2022, is very, very nice. Now, we're still at the library. I'm going to show you one other aspect we've got here, and I can go into my downloads. And you see here, I've got this, a number of downloads I've used from previous videos. Um, and I use a, a fair bit of stock video uh, in what I do. What in order, so let's say, for example, I'll just grab this clip here. Let's move new place in the timeline. So let's move over here. So you can see straightforward clip of some kind of effect that I used in the past. And there, let's stretch it out to the full screen. So there we go. So you can bring video in like that. Well, what I could do is I click here and do download more assets. And this hooks in to the uh, Camtasia assets. So direct integration into the asset library that's available. This is an additional subscription, one that I gladly pay, by the way. If you are doing content creation professionally, in other words, if you're making any money on YouTube, you do not want to be using assets that you do not have a license for. They do come after you, by the way. So let's say we wanted to search for something psychotic. Uh, so you can see here, we've got uh, images, We've got videos and we've got audio clips here as well. So let's go check out what we've got in the video library. So again, do keep in mind, this is a separate subscription. Uh, let's get something kind of creepy. So yeah, that's kind of creepy. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab this guy right here, 1080p, sure. And we're going to send it to Camtasia. So we'd have this integration here. So that is going to go ahead and download it. So you see right up here, the icon for it. Pick where you wish to download it to. I'll download it into downloads. There it is available for me like so. So if I wish to use that video, I can now use that video. And of course, we can put the video behind the other video. And that again is where your transitions come through. So let's say do a bar wipe between them. And we do have 30 new of these as well. Now, another really cool thing that they've done with the integration into another one of their products uh, is something called Audiate. Now I did a video on Audiate in the past and it's a very unique program. So I'm gonna show here. So edit in Audiate. This is my audio soundtrack. Uh, so you gotta save your project first. So let's save this as temp on my desktop. All right, so we'll save our project. And then this is gonna fire it off into Audiate. It's gonna automatically open it up. There is, a, by the way, there is a 30-day free trial of Camtasia 2022 available and a seven-day trial of Audiate. So if you wanna check any of these things out, you can do so. So this takes a little bit of time because what it's doing is basically transcribing the audio into text. And this is an impressive tool. Now I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. Again, I've done a video on it in the past. What I'm more showing you is the tight integration in between the two programs. So if you're one of those people that's a little awkward or you run from a script, here you can see everything I said converted into a script. So here you can see, jump to Camtasia. Camtasia is so it's, it's corresponding. So as it goes through, Camtasia is not perfect. So there you go. So let's say, um, uh, let's swear we're going to do so uh, let's go not and let's say I came in here and I wanted to turn perfect and I, I didn't want that so I could go here and I say okay perfect we go waveform editor and we can actually make changes to the waveform including just straight out erasing it another thing I can do is with the area selected instead of perfect so let's let's grab that area around perfect so you can see it also shows you in the waveform the area that is being selected I can instead say ideal. So now we have ideal instead of perfect. Well, actually we have both in this case. So what I'd probably want to do is get rid of the other one and then boom. So we've just swapped in Camtasia is not ideal. Camtasia is not ideal. And then we've got a pause there. We probably don't want. All right. So let's just get rid of it. So now let's see what we've done with our timeline here. 
So when it comes to making edits to stuff like this, this is really hard to do. And this makes it really, really simple. So this is a separate program, Audiate, but they've integrated the two nicely together. So now that we've made our changes, we're doing perfect instead of ideal. We've switched that out. The other really cool thing it does is when I export it back to Camtasia, we can say, okay, now jiggle. So automatically keep your timeline in sync. So this will fit the newly edited audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, back when we go back over here and it syncs back in. So the change is there. It changed up and it synced everything. So now you basically have new audio working from it. Very cool new feature there. So they're now tightly integrated into their Audi 8 functionality. And again, separate product, you have to buy separately. But if you're someone that works from scripts or you need to transcribe your script, uh, it's got the ability to do transcriptions for you. You saw it automatically converted my voice into text, but it also has this editing functionality. So making post editing your speech. So if you the type of person that has a bumbling over my, if I wanted to get rid of that from my speech, I could easily do it. I just go over there, get rid of the awkward pauses, and boom, you're, you're golden. So if you're looking for that kind of a tool, it is now more nicely, tightly integrated into Camtasia itself. Now, another neat feature of 2022 is the addition of cursor effects. Now, when the recorder is recording things on screen, it is also recording your mouse cursor. Now, I didn't move the mouse around at all because it's basically being captured by Unreal Engine, uh, but any one of these video recordings I could basically drop one of these things in. So for example, if I wanted to highlight where the cursor is, boom, drop it in. And there you see an immediate highlight in the area. I could go ahead, I can increase the size of it and so on. But as I move that mouse around, I've also got the ability to do effects. So for example, I could ripple around it whenever I do a left click or whenever I do a right click. Another really cool thing that we can do, you'll notice with any of these selected over here, I can actually do edit cursor path. And you've got the ability now to actually move and edit where your mouse went. So if you're inaccurate with your mouse um, precision, basically just any point, you can just move your mouse to another location. Now, if I had multiple movements of the mouse, I would have spline curves basically drawn around the screen. So at any point in the timeline, I can move my mouse cursor to another location. So if I don't like what I did when I recorded the video, I can now change it using this new uh, editing of paths. So you've got new cursor effects and the ability to edit the cursor path. Definitely, again, a useful tool if you are doing um, tutorial work, that kind of stuff. And that, again, is where Camtasia 2022 really shines. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Camtasia 2022, one of the most important tools in my daily life and one I highly recommend. Check it out with the download link down below. 30-day free trial. You can't go wrong. All right. Hopefully you found that useful. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.